Today on YouTube 101, your live stream control room. Welcome to Minus Studio. My name is Nathan. With me, as always, is my live streaming fanatic, Ronald. And welcome to YouTube 101 for churches. We're going to demystify some of the YouTube features and options that you might encounter. Today, we're going to take a look at the live stream control room. This is the page you get to when you're ready to start your live stream. It's got all the info and analytics about your live stream in real time while it's going on. So to take a look at that, let's go to the YouTubes. Okay, so you've scheduled your live stream and now you're ready to go live. Let's take a look at the live control room you will be in as you're live streaming on YouTube. So to get to that previously scheduled live stream, you can go here to content and then click live and your upcoming live streams will show up here and you can click on this live control room here. The other way to get to it would be to go to create, go live, and then on the side here, it'll take you to manage and also show your upcoming live streams. You can get to it either one of those ways. So I'm going to click here on this uh, live stream that I've scheduled already. And when I click on it, it'll take me into my live control room. So this is the screen you will be in as you are live streaming. So up top here is your preview. That just shows you that the video is coming in correctly to YouTube. Um, it will be like 15, 20, 30 seconds behind your actual video, so don't get thrown off by that. And then you have all your information you entered beforehand. If you need to uh, edit any of this, hit edit. You can change the title, description, when it's scheduled, visibility. Um, you can enable or disable live chat change your monetization settings, that sort of thing. So that's just where you edit the, the info about it, the title and description and such. Over here to the side is where the live chat will appear. So you'll be able to watch the entire live chat here on the side and you can respond to people down at the bottom, etc. So you don't need to leave this page to see the live chat. It'll show up right here. Then here on the bottom, these five tabs have options and settings and analytics for your live stream. So this first one contains very important settings. So we have your stream key and you can create different um, pre-made stream keys. Apparently I named that one some weird thing. That's not my actual stream key. That's just what I named it for some reason. So you can select your stream key and then here, these uh, blanked out dots, that is your actual stream key. So you can hit the show button or you can just hit this copy button and that's what you will paste into your encoder so your encoder knows where to send the live stream. I'm not going to describe all of that right now, um, but say you're using OBS as an encoder, then you'll go to OBS preferences and you'll copy this stream key right here and add it into OBS. Then you'll make sure the stream URLs are also set in the correct place in your OBS because these are what tell your encoder like OBS, where to send your live stream and to make sure it sends it to this control room and this event right here. Then down here we have your latencies. I always have low latency. Um, if you have a really slow connection, you can choose normal latency or if you have a ridiculously fast connection, you can cho choose ultra low latency, but I usually just go with the low. These additional settings, the auto start and auto stop, that means it kind of takes out your control from YouTube and just leaves it on the encoder. So if those are off, if you do not have auto start and do not have auto stop, it means you'll have to hit go on the encoder and then go on YouTube and then stop on the encoder and then stop on YouTube. If you enable them, there won't be any buttons on YouTube. You'll just hit start and stop on your encoder. So it depends on if you want that extra step or if you just want to control it from your encoder. DVR lets people go back and see it. 360 video, you'd know if you were using that. You can add a delay, you can add closed captions. And then unlist live replay once stream ends. So if you just want your live stream to happen while it's live and then not be public anymore, you can hit that. If you want your live stream to be public on your channel after it's over, then you want to make sure that that is unchecked because you want it to be public and not unlisted. So those are the major settings for your live stream. The other tabs aren't nearly as complicated. Analytics, this will just show how many viewers you have. 
it'll a graph will show up here and it'll show how many viewers you have you could also choose chat rate or playbacks i usually just keep it on viewers and honestly it hasn't always been that accurate but it'll show you how many viewers you have this one is viewer activity things like super chats things like that'll show up i almost never check that honestly stream health That'll show you if it's your stream starting to get low or uh, it's having trouble connecting, that sort of thing. So if you're having issues with your stream or your internet's slow, you might want to keep it on the Stream Health tab and it'll come up with messages that say things like, uh, your connection isn't fast enough or we have a good connection now or you're losing some connection, that sort of thing. And finally is merchandise if you want to show merchandise in your live stream, which I'm going to assume most churches don't. So that is all of the settings in your live control room. Again, I'm not going to explain how all the live streaming and the encoder and that sort of thing works. I do have uh, videos for that, specifically for OBS, on the Minus Studio channel that you can find. But basically, once you hit go on your encoder, it'll send that stream to this live control room. You'll see it pop up on the top here. Here's all your info. Here's your stream settings for your encoder. And then you got an analytics, things like that, and live chat on the side. So this is the window you will be in while you are live streaming on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Hope you learned something helpful today. And stick around because more YouTube 101 for churches is on the way. So good luck on YouTube. And if you did find this video helpful, please subscribe to Minus Studio for more videos just like it. And I will see you back here next week.